Hello everyone, today I'm doing a bit of a different video um, because I'm going to be talking about a new PC build. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think I've done anything like this on the channel. Um, but yeah, I definitely wanted to speak about this because um, many people think this channel is just music orientated, whereas actually I I pretty much enjoy tech quite a lot and I would definitely want to share some information about it and just do some tech videos so I just want this to be like a first tech video that I do on the channel and I think I've got a pretty, pretty decent subject to talk about so in this video I'm going to be talking about a setup a whole complete setup that I made for my dad um, so the situation was that he moved out into his own flat uh, and he's living on his own now and he wanted a he wanted to get a PC to um, to watch YouTube on to to browse the internet to um, to just get more into the, into tech because my dad is not really a super tech savvy person um, he's usually been just constrained to iPhone he has an iPhone 8 right now and that's like his main center of technology if that's how I'll call it and um, and yeah he he, he used to use that as his main main source main source for watching videos uh, browsing the internet banking and etc so uh, he eventually got convinced by me to get a setup build, like a whole setup and uh, he, he, want, he wants to be as budget as possible so I decided that I should just build him a basic gaming PC so if he wants to ever start gaming he can and he has actually started playing CSGO um, on a separate note and he's getting much much better at it which is pretty amazing um, anyways I figured that I, sh I could have just got like an old Dell Optitex or some used computer but now I wanted it to be factory new I wanted it to be somewhat decent for today's day and age without being more overkill than he would need it to be so I eventually came up with a complete setup that's including monitor um, all accessories at around under 450 pounds which I think is a great price and uh, he's been really happy with it and I've managed to squeeze out quite a lot of gaming from it um, I'll include benchmarks uh, at the end by the way uh, as well but anyways, first of all, I also I'll include pictures. Um, pictures and benchmarks here will be included at the end of the video. But of course, um, first I want to cover what is actually consisting of the build. And I wanted to do a quick montage of me actually building the computer, but I thought it would have just been better for me to do it off camera so I can show my dad like how the PC is getting assembled so he has a better understanding of it. Um, so yeah, hence I did not film uh, the build process but I will definitely include pictures, videos and uh, benchmarks at the end so stay tuned. Anyways, um, what you can see right now is the parts list of the computer and you can see that the price is very very uh, low which is amazing. Um, the only thing is that the power supply is not included in the price because it might be out of stock for some reason or something but if I'm not mistaken it costs around £80. A because I don't want to cheap out on that obviously because you should never cheap out on a power supply because I, I really want this build to last him for a long time so I don't want to go for any comprom compromises that could potentially cause the build to not be as good as it could be um, anyways uh, let's get on with the parts list so I'm just going to go into edit mode so I can show you more details okay so first of all with the CPU I went for the Ryzen 3 3200G um, the reason why I did that is because I didn't want to include a dedicated uh, GPU because I would have off the price quite a lot and as I said my dad is definitely not a gamer he recently picked up on casual CSGO and I figured that AP would be his best bet and it runs pretty much perfectly uh, GTA runs nicely on it because I tried it out um, CSGO runs perfectly, Minecraft, um, any other games you, you'd want to throw at it for like a basic game. Like, obviously I'm not talking about Red Dead or something but 
I have a feeling you'll probably run Red Dead as well, but um, don't quote me on that because I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, the I wanted to get an AP uh, to not jack up the price with a dedicated GPU because it is completely unnecessary and unneeded in this setup. And um, of course, I want Ryzen because it's the most budget-friendly option, and in this day and age. Um, is far more affordable than Intel, especially in such a budget build like this. And honestly, for £75, there could not be any complaints in this area. I didn't want to go Athlon or old gen, old gen Ryzen, so second or first gen, because I just, as I said, I want to be uh, the build to be future, a uh, future proof. So there's that. Um, so hence, that's why I went for the 3200 G. And it's a great CPU, runs perfectly, so if you're thinking of doing a budget build, I definitely recommend this uh, AP because it runs everything it needs to pretty well. Uh, as to a CPU cooler, I decided not to go for one because uh, the one included uh, with the Ryzen is perfectly adequate. And actually, it and after building this PC, I can verify that it is pretty pretty good because if I go into temps um, this is an MSI board so it has the Dragon Center uh, add-on control panel okay it doesn't want to start <laughs> um, never mind okay um, I'll include temps at the end then I guess uh, so yeah I didn't uh, pick a CPU cooler because this is this is uh, pretty low low end wires in C, C, CP and uh, it doesn't have a high TDP so I wouldn't expect this uh, CPU to be uh, getting high temps so there's no need for anything anything apart from the stock cooler which as I said does a perfect job temps will be included in the end along with benchmarks and pictures um, okay next is the motherboard so uh, as you can see I went for A320 and the reason why I did that is because as I said my dad has no interest whatsoever in overclocking and uh, he is a really beginner uh, PC user so none of the features that B450 or X570 would offer are needed to him and I am pretty happy from this choice I've made because this motherboard uh, is very sturdy and packs really good features and um, Everything seen is pretty fine on this motherboard. Uh, also, you might have noticed that it's a um, mini micro, AT micro ATX, yeah, micro ATX uh, board. Because as I said, he doesn't need the larger form factor, and a micro ATX board is so so much cheaper than um, the cheapest ATX. And obviously, this is not the cheapest micro ATX A320 you can get. Because uh, I don't want to get the lowest lowest end. I just wanted to get something that's decent. Um, and this motherboard is perfectly adequate for for the job. It has a decent BIOS, um, decent connectivity, and the only thing I would say is the VRMs aren't the best in this. Uh, as in, they're not called called at all. It's basically, I'm sorry, I might be mistaken here, but this is just my view on this. I can't really see any any cooling on on this VRM. But then again, as I said, this board is not designed for overclocking or high TDP CPUs. So for a 3200G, it runs perfectly. The temps are also perfect. Uh, so there's no problem at all. It has an M.2 slot, which I really uh, wanted it to have. Um, and a decent chip chipset heating. So everything in this motherboard is uh, really satisfactory. Um, apart from the only problem, I would say is that it only has one fan header but um, I'll, I'll come back to this later on in the video and I'll mention how I overcame this problem um, as far as AIO goes um, you can't really see it here but if I go on like let's say the Amazon listing um, the AIO is far more than enough and I use I used the, these two USB 2 ports for the keyboard and mouse which I'll mention later on uh, he does not need Wi-Fi because the computer is really close to the router anyway, so Ethernet is completely fine. Although I'd say the Ethernet link is pretty slow, but that might be a BIOS thing that I need to sort out. I'm not exactly sure. Four USB 3 ports, uh, which is more than he needs. 
uh, HDMI is perfect because he can plug, plug it right into his monitor. Uh, DVI he wouldn't really use, and neither the PS2 ports. Um, yeah, this is how this whole set comes. It's very, very good quality, very high quality. Uh, and I'll discuss, I'll possibly discuss the smart board in a different video. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd like to see. Um, so yeah, okay, moving on from the from the motherboard. Uh, yeah, we're going to the RAM. There's not much to say here. Uh, I the, the thing is with this motherboard. Actually, I forgot to mention. Uh, this motherboard only has two slots, but my dad said he doesn't mind replacing all of both the RAM sticks to uh, uh, to high capacity ones, or maybe even the whole motherboard if he once he gets the hang of computers and everything so that's so in that aspect i wasn't really looking for future proofing hence this kind of maybe temporary or uh or like current setup regarding ram and uh on the motherboard uh so as you can see it's only eight gigs of it so two times four gigs and um, i could have got a one eight gig stick and then got another 68 to make 16 but uh, Ryzen runs in dual channel mode so you want both sticks to be present so I figured 8 gigs is enough for him because he is not a heavy multitasker he is not going to stream he's not going to have many tabs open he, he's the kind of person that usually has only one program program open at a time uh, so all I wanted the RAM to be to have is uh, high clock speed and low cast latency which this RAM has. I could have went to 4200, but that that would have been probably overkill in this aspect because the price premium was uh, pretty significant for this budget, and the performance gains would have not been utilized in any way. To be to be honest, uh, so that's why I chose 30 uh, 3000 sp uh, speed memory because it is pretty it's pretty darn fast, uh, and we know that Ryzen prefers faster memory and this is fast enough plus the latency is really good uh, build quality of this RAM is really really nice uh, on the picture it doesn't look near as good it looks like it was made out of plastic or something but in reality it's good solid metal uh, heatsink and very high quality RAM and I definitely recommend the Vengeance LPX series especially since uh, it helps out with uh, low clearance builds and I must say that when I installed the fan on this, uh, there was very little clearance between the RAM sticks and the fan. So LPX is very good um, for RAM, uh, for RAM sticks because it's low profile and good value and very good build quality. Anyways, moving on uh, to storage. So my dad is not going to have a lot of programs installed. Uh, to be honest, all he need, all he has is FL Studio because he wants to dabble with music and beat making, uh, Chrome for web browsing and Steam for CS:GO and other like gaming. So for that, I figured 128 gigs is completely enough. Um, but he, of course, is planning to get a two terabyte Barracuda uh, hard drive in the future, which is no problem at all. Can be done any any time. Um, so this is obviously his boot drive and. The reason I chose an NVMe is obviously because fast boot times and good performance. Um, this this NVMe is built pretty well. The build quality is pretty nice. However, uh, I'd say the consistency of the speed is something a bit not not the best here. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is a DRAM in this, uh, SSD, uh, which is which is a pretty bad idea but as I said for my dad it doesn't really make a difference because he's not going to be doing any high performance operations on here so it's good as it is but I have a um, I have an, I have a regular SSD inside my laptop uh, it's this P PNY one uh, right here and if I'm not mistaken it's not DRAM less but I'm not sure uh, I'm not sure uh, on that one but performance of this SSD uh, it's pretty much uh, slightly superior, at least in my use scenario and in my case. Uh, I don't know, your mileage may vary, but that's how I feel like it is. Uh, I think my SSD has better performance than, than this, so I would potentially learn from this, not necessarily a mistake, 
but I would opt in for maybe a slightly higher end SSD so I wouldn't really necessarily get this one I would invest more for a better one but in this case in this build it does its job pretty well and it is not a bother to my dad's use of the computer uh, video card I mentioned that there isn't one included for now possibly one will be included in the future but for now it is not required um, and then the case uh, I decided to go for an ATX case because a uh, mini or micro ATX case uh, was far more expensive than normal ATX cases perhaps because they're less common uh, besides I wanted to have my dad give my dad the option to future proof his build so if he wants to ever put an ATX uh, in he won't have to trash the whole build um, and and yeah that's why I went for ATX mid tower and it's a pretty good it's a pretty good mid tower it has it has more than enough uh, hard drive base than she will ever need airflow is good as mentioned in people's reviews uh, has USB 3 uh, front panel tempered glass side and has a delicate little light here which adds a nice subtle glow to this RGB less build there's no RGB in this build at all um, and it's really nice and minimal with everything being dark here and the tiny little highlight glow here looks very nice as I said I'll include pictures in the end um, this case is very good quality I'd say uh, I like I like the build of the tempered glass I like the cable routing options on the inside um, let me perhaps get better pictures of it uh, yeah the cable routing is very good I like how there's a cable route uh, coming for the, the PSC shroud uh, down there you can't really see it in this picture um, I don't think there's any better picture of this but yeah you can level out cables through here for the bottom of the shroud which is really nice uh, overall cable management is very good in this case airflow is excellent as well has radiator support which is great removable filters as well as you can see here there's one underneath as well right here and one in the front um, the only the only thing I wouldn't like about two things I wouldn't like about this case one of them is my own concern which is how hard it is to remove the front panel well, necessarily it doesn't really necessarily need to be removed but if you want to clean the filter then you'd want to remove it and it's pretty hard to remove it to the point of you're scared to break the plastic because yes, this is plastic, uh, the rest is metal or glass, but this front panel is plastic and the feet are plastic too. It would have been nice to have both these metal, but that would have probably raised the price and the weight of the case significantly. But yeah, I don't really like how difficult it is to remove this, but then again, it makes the build more sturdy, which in a way is a positive, but I would rather have there be an easier mechanism to take off the, take off the front panel. Um, and the other the other problem with this case is a concern that my dad had that there's no dust cover for the front IO which means dust can get in uh, which yeah I agree could be a bit of a concern but he just can't, if he's not using the computer he just covers it covers it with a cloth or something without restricting airflow which is fine but but yeah, overall it's a very nice case for a very good price and very sturdy um so finally in this uh, from the parts list we've got the power supply um, as you can see uh, sorry let me just go back as you can see this build does not require a lot of power but as I said I want it to be future proofed for if you want to get a GPU or better CPU mini motherboard etc so I've got a 450 watt power supply I went for CSON because they're a reliable good company and gold certified to increase efficiency obvious reasons um, the cables included and the cable ties, all the equipment profiles are excellent. Um, the power supply itself is a great unit of very high quality. I'd say that the that the um, I would I would not know how to call it, but the nylon cover for the cables isn't the best quality necessarily, but it's nice for it to be there. And yeah, overall, it's a very nice, very good power supply, very sturdy, and very reliable, and very high quality as most CSONIC price supplies are so I would definitely recommend getting this for a build and you can get different variants of it uh, different what to do if I'm not mistaken um, so yeah it's a very good price supply unfortunately it's out of stock right now but uh, if you can get it then I do recommend it um, so okay so that's all that there is to the actual PC parts so um, 
Now I wanted to mention how I overcame the problem of the one fan header in the motherboard because the case, Corsair case, comes in comes with two fans. Um, so obviously if there's only one header you can't connect the second fan. So I just got this cheap adapter that uh, uses the one header on the motherboard uh, to connect two fans. Um, it works perfectly. One thing to know is that only one of the additional headers uh, reports temperature and speed. So make sure you connect in two identical fans. I think I think that's right. I might be wrong on this, but from what I've read, that is the case here. Um, but yeah, overall it is a very good cable. The build quality on this cable is actually pretty impressive and. Yeah, overall it's a very nice cable, very very good and very helpful for this situation. I don't know why you would only include one header on this motherboard, but but it is what it is. Uh, yeah, so if you have the same problem, I really recommend getting this cable. Um, so okay, so onto the keyboard and mouse. Uh, this is the keyboard and mouse. Uh, I wanted it for it to be backlit, so you can use it in the dark. And yep, it is backlit. The backlight is pretty nice. Uh, the few of the keys. Uh, he wanted a really quiet keyboard because my keyboard at, back at home is very loud. Um, so this keyboard is very nice because it's really quiet. Um, and the feel of it is okay. It, it's better than those cheap office keyboards you get, but it's not that great. But for the price, you really cannot complain here. Um, but yeah, the build quality is okay. I wouldn't say it's the best. Uh, as far as it being metal, um, I think that is meant to be the. I think maybe only the back plate is metal because the front is plastic. Uh, the mouse is also pretty nice quality, has a pretty nice feel. Um, the backlight is really nice, so overall it's a very nice keyboard and mouse, and I would recommend getting, getting it if you're on a budget. And finally, we come onto the monitor, um, which is this BenQ. 22 inch monitor. He did not want a 24 inch or above monitor because that would have been too big for his pretty small flat so that's hence why we went for a 22 inch monitor and uh, we wanted it to be a VA monitor and if I have the right listing, I might be on the wrong listing here because I'm not too sure exactly but if this is the VA monitor, I don't know if I can see that anywhere. Uh, no, I can't really, can't really tell here but if this is VA, then it is the right listing. But yeah, uh, I wanted a VA panel for the obvious uh, advantages of a VA panel. Uh, and I wanted it to be cheap, and BenQ was one of the cheap offerings from a good company because I didn't want to get a no brand monitor. And overall, the monitor is really good because it has uh, two HDMI ports, which is great. It has a headphone out and a line in, I think. Yeah, line in. And it has this really interesting uh, mechanic where you can hide the cables, tuck the cables away behind this um, back plate of the stand, which is awesome, I think. Uh, overall, um, wait, maybe it says, yeah, VA panel, yeah, so this is the right listing. Uh, it's 60 hertz, which is good enough for this build. The colors and the, and the sharpness from this monitor is perfect. So overall, it's a very, very nice panel. Um, I very very much like this monitor, it's really nice and compared to the curved Samsung monitor I have, uh, can I find it here? It's the curved version of this I think, um, it's really really good, uh, I would probably say that it has better colours than my Samsung monitor which is also a VA monitor but it's 24 inch and possibly even better sharpness but yeah it's a very nice monitor I and I recommend it. So anyways, um, this would be it for the whole setup. Um, I am going to now show you the benchmarks and the pictures and possibly some videos of a voiceover. But yeah, this build got fully assembled by me and put together by me. And for the time being, is a build I would definitely recommend for people to get because for the price is incredible value. Um, so anyways, let's continue on to the benchmarks and the pictures.